In many densely populated areas, like the Long Creek watershed in southern Maine, streams can be polluted by stormwater runoff from impervious surfaces like roofs, pavement, and sidewalks. For decades, the community of South Portland had an annual fishing derby at Clark's Pond, which Long Creek feeds into. But in the late 60s and early 70s, the fish went away because of all the development in the area. And it was actually back in the 1980s that I first visited that watershed. Um, we saw a lot of impacts from the acres of, of parking and roads and you know, everything that you would expect in an urban environment, um, which really had very significant impacts on the water quality. Maine DEP identified Long Creek as an urban impaired watershed, yet many of the developed properties were not required to manage stormwater runoff. The landowners in the Long Creek watershed didn't know they were in a watershed, didn't know there was a creek running through the land area, didn't know there was a water quality problem. That was the challenge, was to get everybody to come to the table and understand the problem and then say, yes, we have to work together to fix it. We encourage them to come up with a plan or a structure for implementing that plan that we could buy into. To address the water quality problems, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency used its residual designation authority to require stormwater permits for the sources of the potential pollution in the watershed. The Conservation Law Foundation provided us with data that showed that certain kinds of sources were causing problems in Long Creek. The certain kinds of sources they identified were large impervious areas. The city of South Portland knew it was likely that the Conservation Law Foundation would be filing um, a legal petition requiring special action in the Long Creek watershed. With guidance from Maine DEP, and funding from EPA, the landowners in the watershed began working together to develop a watershed management plan. With so many different players, there are differences of opinion, how to get there, exactly what to do. But when everybody has the same goal of creating a watershed that is drinkable, fishable, and swimmable, it, it's hard to argue against that. Once the goal was set, the next challenge was funding the implementation of the plan. The crazy idea was to build an institution that used permit obligations and allowed people to get a general permit, which is much less regulatory oversight, uh, to use that as a funding mechanism to do the work on behalf of all of the businesses, as well as the other landowners like the towns and the road, the road organizations. The four municipalities um, worked collaboratively to um, enter into an interlocal agreement to establish the Long Creek Watershed Management District. We wanted a structure that would allow both public and private representation on the governing board because both public and private entities own the impervious surface in this watershed. Anybody who has one acre or more of impervious surface, they need to get a permit. So we have 127 designated parcels and we ended up with 97% participation and the landowners range in size from um, just over an acre to right up to 66 acres of impervious surface. And so how that worked out is $3,000 per impervious acre per year for a 10-year time frame and that $3,000 is broken down to support um, construction and maintenance, and that's actual structures, um, retrofits of impervious surface to treat that area before it reaches the stream, do stream restoration projects, and good housekeeping pollution prevention, which is vacuum sweeping of all the properties and streets throughout the watershed. As the idea evolved, it became very clear to landowners that participating in this project would be much more cost effective for them and would be better for the environment. The Cumberland County Soil and Water Conservation District coordinates the implementation of the watershed plan. Several projects, including one treatment facility that serves several landowners and the transformation of an existing detention basin into a gravel wetland have already been completed. Habitat restoration is also underway. So what we've done is come back and try to restore that original, as best we can in a commercial setting, that original stream setting. And that involved first uh, installing boulders, root wads, other things like that, uh, creating some new meanders. Uh, and the second part of it was a huge riparian or 
bankside planting where we brought in over a thousand perennials, bushes, and trees. And in this way, we'll be providing a lot of shade to this section of the stream and a lot of future habitat for uh, different bugs and fish and whatever else might come up the stream. We've expanded our buffer zones on this hole because it's the leading edge of Long Creek. This used to be matted down and you could walk right up and you could see the creek from here. Now you can't see it any longer. Everything's growing up, all the vegetation is working very well. You let it grow as big as it can and it's actually soaking up everything, slowing it down and shading the creek. I've learned quite a bit. The natural occurring things, I always thought that a stream should go as fast as it could to get to a large body of water. Uh, I've learned that slowing it down, cooling it off, shading it is, uh, is very important to the environment. And we do collaborative monitoring of the entire watershed, so we're not, again, doing individual parcels. We're instead doing the stream itself and looking at uh, the health of the stream. One area of the watershed where we're seeing improvements is Blanchett Brook. It was pretty exciting to see that after one year. One of the things we learned is it's really important to bring people together early. People from very different perspectives came together with a really positive attitude, a, a community building attitude, and they came up with a creative model that no one had thought of at the beginning. This is a national problem, and uh, what makes this project meaningful um, beyond the boundaries of the Long Creek watershed is that it is an opportunity for us to try out methods for solving what are problems that are repeated in literally thousands of watersheds around the country. It took 40 years to damage it, and we have to have patience. But by working together, sticking to the plan, constantly modifying and adapting that plan, we will eventually get to the end.